Happy Monday to you all, and welcome to another episode of the Running Educator Podcast. My name is Mike Cummings. I'm your host. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to be here. Um, in today's episode 38, we will be discussing the book by Hunter Clark Field, Raising Good Humans, a mindful guide to breaking the cycle of reactive parenting and raising kind and confident kids. But... Before we get to that, I'd like to do a little bit of housekeeping items. Uh, a quick shout out to the, well, Live Full and Die Empty Cycling Clothing line. I um, have been an ambassador of that for starting this year. I'm very excited to be a part of that team. Um, I also want to kind of reflect on the month of February. Hope everybody had a good Valentine's Day and hopefully you did some random act of kindness throughout that. Um, want to share a little bit what's going on next month. My guest will be Mike and Anne Marie Sanford. Uh, that episode will be covering the life of a coach as well as the wife. <laughs> uh, they have such a hectic schedule and hectic life. Um, and I think it's very fascinating how they live it. So check out for that next episode. And then if those people are doing the third annual 4x4x48 by David Goggins, that's on March 4th, you should check it out. Um, it's a great fundraiser that David Goggins does, but you can also do it to test your physical prowess if you'd like. For those that do not know what that's all about, it's um, running four miles every four hours for 48 hours. Um, you can modify that as well. Uh, you can do 40 minutes. You can do something different, uh, exercises, whatever you can do. Um, I would check out the David Goggins uh, webpage on his Instagram, and that could give you all of the information you need. Going back to the book and going back to what Hunter Clark's field fields um, talks about modern parenting and um which is interesting because it, it made me reflect on the parenting that my parents did to me. Uh, my dad was pretty much the yeller, dictator for life kind of a guy, his way or the highway. And then my mom was more of the passive aggressive, uh, almost enabler. So I had the best of both worlds. And I think if you don't reflect on what your parents or how your parents guided you in your life, you're going to be in this cycle of not knowing how to parent your own kids. Um, and this also kind of caters to teaching as well and coaching. Um, I find myself using these practices a lot whenever I'm in altercations or any kind of, uh, you know, disagreements or arguments with, with students and kids. So the three big takeaways I want you to kind of understand from this book is you know, how to become a better listener is the biggest thing I took away. But um, I'll talk briefly about how Hunter Fields, uh, Clark Fields, uh, basically stop yelling map that she has on her website. Um, the other part I want you to kind of understand is bringing wellness into your parenting practices. And then as a teacher, I, I tried to model you know, using assertive communication. And one of the best ways I've done that is through the use of I statements. So I'll briefly kind of touch on that. So with that further ado, we'll go into the first lesson. Just stop and listen. If you're ever in an a moment or you're ever in a situation where you and a child are arguing yelling it's not going to go anywhere because you can't just have the child calm down imagine being yelled at when you were a kid and what was in your mind or what you were thinking i don't want to listen to this i don't want to be a part of this again you got to be the model the the person to help the kid understand where they're at and where they're coming from and not using emotions during the altercation or any kind of argument that's going on. Um, so becoming a, a good listener, you have to calm everything down because the, the child, student, you know, your kid is going to reflect what energy you're giving off. And I've seen this firsthand. 
uh, with my son. And I'm still trying to practice calmness uh, and going into this and becoming a better listener. Um, my dad tells me all the time, I wish I was a better listener. And it's like, it's not the easiest thing to do. But um, the map that Hunter Clark Fields has created on her mindful mama mentor.com uh, is a six step process, which is very, very insightful. And I, I'll just read it to you. And you can always check it out if you'd like to get some more information on it. But step one is you got to slow down to yelling. Um, like I was just talking about yelling creates that disconnect. Um, if you show that you are calm, most likely your child will be calm. So step two would be calm down the nervousness system. Um, a lot of the times I'm always asking questions, you know, what are you feeling right now? How, how did you become so angry? I understand, you know, I try to identify what the kid is demonstrating or showing me that way and be like, oh man, you look pretty irritable. Did something happen or whatever? So it just gives them kind of like an idea like, hey, I'm on your side kind of a thing. So um, step three, un uncover your triggers. So that means um, the behaviors that you as a parent or a teacher go to drive the kid away. But not only that, like, again, if a kid is being, you know, non-communicative, uh, that could drive a lot of teachers, you know, crazy because, um, you know, they're thinking that they're just, you know, no editing all or, or, or just being smart when in all actuality, they have no idea. The student has no idea how to articulate what they're saying. So, or how they're feeling. So you need to continue to ask questions again. That's, that becomes a great listener and reflecting and being able to, hey, I, from what I understand or what I heard from you, this is what I heard. And, and that reassures that the student heard what you're saying. So it's also calming all the triggers. Um, practice self-compassion. Um, you know, <laughs> I've been there. I've done that. And, and I, you know, a lot of the things, if you can relate and help this, the child understand that, yeah, yeah, I've made some mistakes too. And, and I'm human and I, I'm still learning. And I think that self-compassion will help reflect and model what the student needs to take away. Um, step five, create a close connection. Again, this is just a simple, hey, how are you doing? Nothing outside of whatever issues that you might have. Um, just creating a, a, a relationship that is most needed for any kind of uh, successful parenting, teaching skill. And then last, lastly, uh, step six, you want to express yourself honestly and effectively. Um, this creates boundaries. Uh, this, this is honoring not only your needs, but what the students needs are. Cause at the end of the day, students want interaction and they're going to get it negatively and positively. And my goal as an educator and as a parent uh, is to try to have as most positive interactions as I can. So kids are looking for that discipline. Kids are looking for that approval because that's what they want. So as humans, as parents, as teachers and coaches, we have to give that to our students and our kids. Practice wellness. To be able to be an effective parent or teacher, you have to practice two elements. One is empathy, which this has to be able to not be reactive to the behavior that the child is displaying, but instead focus on the emotions that the child exhibits. So it is important to recognize and label the emotional reactions to help students, kids, whoever to understand their emotional. This is building the emotional intelligence, which is huge. The second element that you need to be able to help um, bring wellness into this would be guidance. Um, explaining the why of the emotions and why they have arisen or why they are the way they are. Um, depending on the situation, obviously, um, giving children 
timeouts or breaks to understand and process a little bit because some some kids process things a little slower than others or have difficulties of understanding what it is but if you give that that child hey this is why you're angry and let them process it and then come back and have a focused conversation and guide that kid through the way that the why that they behave that way um helps them understand again their emotional intelligence going through with this um that mindfulness that wealth wellness part of parenting uh will really help not only kids understand why they get so angry how they get so frustrated but it also gives them the understanding that hey i'm not going to give you the answers you need to figure this out on your own and here i'm just here to help you again understand the reactions and then give them the guidance of how to get through this and get some resolutions um to teach kids to go towards the acceptance of what it is and you know believe in what it will be if you haven't heard about anchor it's the easiest way to make a podcast let me explain it's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's the easiest way to make a podcast all in one place. Download for free the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That is a n c h o r dot f m. Enjoy. How to communicate assertively. So, as a parent, as I'm always trying to get better and be an effective leader, effective communicator, and understanding person, I also have to teach. My child, not only my students as well, how to use verbal I statements to clearly express their feelings, and how I do that is just by using I statements. So an I statement is I feel blank when blank because blank. What I want is blank. These I statements focus on your feelings and wants, and not the other person's faults, and that is so hard to do. When trying to, you know, de-escalate a situation, understand what's going on, and then identifying the emotional needs that the kid needs, but if you can help prompt that child, that student, your child, your kid, hey, what is it that you need?、Um, can you tell me by using one of your I statements? And and simply just right there is a great oh yeah prompt to letting them know hey this is what I need to do. To effectively communicate to my my dad or whatnot,、um, and it's very fascinating to use that because most of the times, a lot of the big blowups are a bunch of small things that never got talked about, never got acknowledged, never was understood, and so that's why I feel that the I statements are very important to acknowledging what your students, your child, is feeling, and then not only that, getting the wants that they need. To be successful in their life, again, adding more to how to become、uh, more mindful、uh, in your parenting, how to become、uh, a kind person, and again, all while doing this, getting、uh, boundaries and wants to understanding what they need to do to become a better person. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to the Running Educator podcast.、Um, I want to go over the three lessons slash practices that I've taken away from raising good humans: a mindful guide to breaking the cycle of reactive parenting and raising kind and confident kids by Hunter Clark Fields.、Um, I think we can all agree that we all need to be better listeners, and by doing that. 
using the simple stop yelling roadmap can help you understand where the kid is at or where your child is at or where your student is at to better meet them in the middle instead of just yelling and telling them to be calm when you're not being calm. Um, being able to bring wellness into your parenting and teaching practice uh, with the two coaching uh, emphasis of, you know, empathy and, and guidance uh, to help the student understand why they feel the way they feel and to be empathetic about it. But not only that, guide them to the why and what you can do to help them um, be better about their emotions and their, you know, reactions to situations. And then not only that, using the I statements, um, modeling and teaching kids how to effectively and assertively talk about their feelings and why they are feeling the way that they are, but not only that, getting what they they need or what they want. Um, a lot of kids just want, you know, the the discipline or the affection or the guidance or the love or whatever how that is, and they get it through us as educators, as as parents, as people. So. Um, If you need to see more resources on this, please check out the Running Educator podcast uh, on WordPress. Uh, That is my blog. It has all the resources there that you need. You can also check us out on all of the social media platforms of Instagram, YouTube, and on PodgePage. And with that being said, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you again for listening, and I hope you keep on running and keep on learning. Thanks.